OK, so I am doing this demo um, outside of class as opposed to in class because it's not going to really affect a lot of you. Um, but it uh, it's, uh, happens enough times that I want to do it. And actually, as camera, these cameras become more and more uh, popular, I think it's important to have this demo um, for some people. So what I'm doing the demo today on is uh, how to transfer your videos from a high-definition camera that shoots MTS files. Um, and MTS files uh, are, are one of the few files that we actually can't convert with, um, with MPEG stream clip. Right now, MPEG stream clip is not being written to, to do uh, MTS files. It may eventually. Um, I, I, don't, I don't know. Uh, but anyway, if I've just popped in a, an SD card with MTS files. And uh, here you can see I've, I've opened up the card. Here's a no name right here on the desktop. And you can see that there is a very specific file structure. Um, AVC, AVCHD is, is, is uh, part of it. And then you can go in here, and, and you know, eventually you'll find BDMV, which is movie, um, and then stream. And MTS files are high definition files, usually about uh, 1080p is usually the standard for MTS fi files. Um, but uh, as I said before, you, you can't transfer these with MPEG stream clip. So um, it's actually easier because you use Final Cut Pro. But here's the trick. This is the really, really, really important part. See this file structure that's here, the DCIM, the miscellaneous, the private, the AVH, or AVCHD, all these folders. In order to create your backup folder, you cannot change the structure in any way, shape, or form. So what you're going to do in order to, to do your backup is you're just going to go here and, and uh, let's go to media staff. Um, you know, you would go to your students folder, media students. Um, I'm going to media staff. And uh, here's my film backups folder. And let's just say this is project number, uh, let's say this is project one. And then today's date is 2011, September 27th. So now, in order to create my backup folder, what I really need to do, uh, essentially, is I have to drag everything in here. All these folders have to be intact. If you just do, if you just go and click on the stream folder and drag these MTS files in here, uh, you won't be able to convert them. Uh, and I, I have figured out a workaround, but it's it's horrendous. Um, you actually have to use two programs. You first have to use a program called Handbrake and convert them to MP4s, which is MPEG4s, and then you can use MT, uh, MPEG Stream Clip to take the MPEG4s into uh, what they call Apple ProRes 422, which is the standard for high definition editing uh, with Final Cut Pro. So it, it's really um, frustrating, and, and it's it's just. It's just ridiculous, actually, what you have to do. So what you're going to do, um, really, is you're going to copy all of these folders. Now, the one thing that I would say is check this folder here, the DCIM. This is digital camera, digital camera images. This is still images. And you can see that this uh, ca camera card has a lot of still images on it. So we're not going to use that. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to highlight the miscellaneous, uh, which doesn't look like it has anything in it anyway, but I just want to copy everything that's in the, no in the flash drive. Uh, and I'm just going to take those two and I'm just going to drag them into my backup folder. And then what's going to happen is it's going to copy. And you can see here, look at this, high definition files are pretty darn large. Um, it won't take 40 minutes, though. It'll take more like four or five or six minutes. I'm not quite sure why the network uh, is being really slow right now. Um, but it, it will. It will take a while with high definition uh, files. And then for just good measure, just to make this look exactly like the, um, <coughs> the camera card, I'm going to go into my backup here and I'm going to create a DCIM folder. And I'm just going to basically take that and put that in there. There'll be nothing in it, but I want this backup folder here to look exactly like the file structure and the folder structure of the, the um, the no name SD card here. I don't need to worry about this disk ID.pod. I don't even know what that is. Um, but we're just going to have to uh, uh, leave that be for, for some reason. Boy, this is taking a long time. Holy cow. Well, I think what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to cancel this. And I'm just going to copy. Well, no, I should probably let it go because you've got you to have the whole thing. Um, but I'm going to pause and see if this speeds up here, and then I'll 
come back to you when this is done. Okay, well, I canceled that because it's taking so long. I don't know why the network is being really slow. But you can see here I've got a bunch of MTS files. Um, and I, you know, I think with, uh, the, the important thing to do is to really um, just make sure that everything looks the same. So inside my Project 1 September 27th folder, um, I have you know, all three files here, miscellaneous file there. And what's in the private file is actually what's really important. I don't know why it's called private file. That's just kind of silly. But, um, you know, and I think it's really good before you start ejecting anything or getting rid of the card um, to just check and make sure that uh, everything works or, or that everything is the same. You know, um, you know, if I just go back and forth between the two, I just want to make sure I have basically the same number of files. And then especially once you get into the BDMV fo uh, folder, you have these clips uh, clip information files, okay, so there's a bunch there. You have an index file and a, and a playlist file and the playlist and then the biggest one being the stream file, the stream folder, I mean, and the stream folder is, is the one that uh, has just got all the clips in it and you can see that there are, uh, you know, a bunch of clips in here which is over two gigs worth of stuff. So now once you've copied that, and obviously I didn't copy them all, you can see that there's only 12 here, but uh, it was just taking so long I, I, couldn't, I, I couldn't wait <laughs> basically for it. So what you're going to then do is you can go to um, Final Cut Pro. Now actually what I recommend is ejecting the, um, is ejecting the card. Um, but the problem with that for this demo is that since I didn't finish copying everything, um, I have to use the card. But once you've copied everything, you can actually um, convert your files from this folder, and if you choose this folder, it will it will act like it's a um, uh, like it's like it's the card if the file structure is identical, and that's the really important thing here is this file this folder structure. All of this stuff has to be identical to the card itself, and and I mean identical. Every file has to exist. In fact, right now because I haven't copied all of the MTS files it'll give me an error in Final Cut Pro because it knows that the number of MTS files does not equal the um, index, movie object files, and the clip information files. They're different. So it's going to know that something is off. It's going to know something is wrong. So I'm going to have to do it from the card. Um, and you can do it from the card. It's not a problem. Um, but as long as you've made your backup and everything works uh, or everything is copied the same way, then everything will work. So I'm going to go to Final Cut Pro, and now the process is actually really, really simple. Um, I've got a brand new project here, and if you haven't made a new project, you know, close the existing project and start a new one. And, uh, and then I, I, I recommend saving it first. And I think the important thing about saving it first is by saving it first, it will uh, name the capture scratch um, <clears throat> based upon the project name. So I might go here and then go to Final Cut Pro Projects, and I'm going to name this uh, MTS Import Demo, okay? Now, <clears throat> when I start importing the files, it's going to create, let's see, make a new folder here, on the Macintosh hard drive in the Scratch disk, Final Cut Pro Documents, Capture Scratch. Um, you can see this is where we were putting our files when we were converting from the .mod files on the Canon cameras. But if I didn't save this Final Cut Pro project first, when I start transferring the files, it's going to create a folder in here that just says Untitled, which isn't a real big deal because Final Cut Pro will know where the folders or where the files are. But then, you know, it's kind of hard. You've got to sort through things, and I don't like that. So I like just making it, uh, I like making it easier by just saving the project first. And now it's really as simple as going Log and Transfer. If you've got the card in the uh, card reader slot on the Mac, it's going to pop up, okay? And you're going to see all your clips are just going to show up. Um, <clears throat> if you ejected the card and you want to convert from your backup folder, just click on the folder here and find your backups folder. So you would go to Media Students and find your student folder. I go to Media Staff and I click, and there's my film backups. Now watch this. Right here, this is the copy of that um, card, and I've copied the f uh, folder structure exactly the same, but because I don't have the right number of MTS files, it's going to throw an error. And you don't click on any of these other folders, you just click on the top folder here as if it was the top of the card. 
uh, the top level of the card. And you click open. And see, it gives me an error here. Um, and that is because I don't have the right number of MTS files. So we're just going to stick with the card because that works quite well. And uh, in this case, I know that this student has um, actually did uh, two projects on, her, on, on this camera. And so we only want to import a certain number of clips. So you can highlight these clips with the Command key and the Shift key, basically, and, and select which ones you want. And all you're going to have to do is drag them down in here. Before you do that, what I really recommend is go over to the naming presets here. And I say, you, I want you to set current name and clip date or time. <clears throat> this is going to be really important because let's say you transfer some stuff today and you have clip number one. And then you're going to erase the card. Trust me, you want to erase the card. But then you go tonight and you shoot again. Your first clip, because you erased the card, is going to be named clip one again. Well, I'm afraid that if you start importing stuff, that this clip one will be replaced by the clip one that you bring into tomorrow. And then you lose footage. And we don't want to do that. So <clears throat> we want to make sure that we add the date that it was shot at. Your camera has the date and time in it when it's, being, when it's using film. And you should all be good there. You can also check, do you want the audio in? You may not, um, but you probably do. In fact, I recommend you always bring in the audio. We can get rid of it later. And that's basically it. All you have to do is transfer this stuff over. And it will actually start transferring the clips, and it will bring the status in. Um, and it takes a while, but it'll go. And then eventually it'll be all done, and you close this window, and you're going to see the clips are going to start appearing here in the, uh, in the browser. Well, sorry, I got interrupted there by Miss Lorenzo, but uh, as we've taken a pause here, you can see it's already worked on a bunch of clips. It's really fast. You can see that the clips are now appearing in the, uh, in the project folder right there. And if I go back into the Finder, we can see now all of a sudden in the Capture Scratch, a new folder has been created that's called MTS Import Demo, which tells me exactly what project these clips are from as opposed to um, you know, just untitled one, untitled two, which is what would happen if you didn't save the, the file first. Um, some of the longer clips are definitely going to take a lot longer to transfer, but it seems like it's moving along pretty good. Um, you can even minimize this window here and just let it keep working in the background. And just, I wouldn't do any heavy editing, but you can see as you start to, you know, you can take your clips and, and start editing them. The other thing you can do is you can bring it down into the timeline and start to edit too. And what it's going to tell you is right now the clips don't match the sequence. The sequence was probably a standard definition widescreen sequence because that's what I'm usually doing stuff in. And this is high definition footage. Do I want to change the sequence settings to match the clip settings? And the answer is absolutely yes. So now I have a high definition sequence and I have um, with my high definition clips. And I can continue. I can go back down here to the, uh, oh, well, where is it? Oh, maybe it's done. Yeah, I think it finished. I think it finished all of them. So if I go back to Log and Transfer, <coughs> yeah, it comes up. It's done. So and now you can see it's all finished here. And in the window, you can see that all these clips have a little circle around them. It's going to remember that it already imported them, um, which I think is very cool. Kind of helps a lot. Um, and, and I, I really like, uh, I like the fact that it does that. And I can go, oh, wait, I forgot that one, and drag this one back into the window, and it will import that. You know, like, oh, I wanted number two. Boom, there you go. And it'll start to import number two. And look, it's already done. And, and there it is, see? So you know, you're able to do a lot with these. And you're able to, uh, to, to log and transfer. In a lot of ways, it's much simpler than using MPEG uh, stream clip. The real trick is, let me quit this. And yes, I want to save. The real trick is remembering that you have to keep the folder structure the same on your backup. If you don't do that, then your backup is absolutely useless. Um, I tr I've had students do this where they back things up with MTS files, and all they did was just copy the MTS files into a folder. They didn't keep all this stuff, and uh, it ended up just being an absolute disaster. Um, you really need all of this stuff, and, and, or else it just doesn't recognize it. Um, and I'm waiting for somebody to, to make a real nice uh, free MTS conversion software on the internet, but so far 
no luck. So at this point in time, I've gotten all the clips that I want. I'm going to eject my um, I'm going to eject my card out of the out of the computer, and uh, now I can erase it and start filming uh, new stuff. And uh, I I think that that's um, I also really do recommend erasing everything off of the camera once you've copied it to the backup folder and transferred it, so that you have um, you have a, a, a you know a clean card that you can start with because these files take up a lot of space. You probably find out that you're running out of space real fast uh, shooting these movies. So anyway, hope that helps, um, and uh, hope that you kind of understand a little bit better about how to use the MTS files with uh, Final Cut Pro. And again, can't say it enough. You have got to keep these folder structures the same whenever you do your backups. Um, okay, for your backup folder, because if you don't, you know, the backup is, is is almost worthless. The the process in which you need to to take in order to um, <clears throat> to convert them so that Final Cut Pro will use them is is ridiculous, um, absolutely ridiculous. But it can be done. So if you do make this mistake, don't throw everything away. Don't throw in the towel. Don't say I'm done. I have to reshoot. We can take these MTS files and we can convert them with Handbrake and then use um, M, you know, convert them to MPEG-4s with Handbrake at full quality and then we take Handbrake, or, I mean MPEG Stream Clip and convert the MPEG-4s into Apple ProRes 422 files and then you're finally ready to edit. But it literally can take days because these files take a very long time to process. So we don't want to make that mistake if we can help it. And that's it.